I got a new product announcement, Weldmonger brand dual flow meters with the best warranty in the industry. I taped some wire on here just to keep that thing from falling down in there. Got tacks on the corner. And I got those, those end caps all taped up because I'm purging now to get, to get uh, those end caps purged. I can't use aluminum backing on the inside anymore. And so we're going to talk a little bit about purging here. Purging is displacing the oxygen from the back side of the weld so that the molten metal won't oxidize. Argon is usually used. Occasionally nitrogen is used. Argon is the most, most common purge gas. It helps very much to think of it as filling a container with water. Argon is heavier than air, so it generally fills an odd shape just like water would. And so you have these areas where water could get trapped if you don't have a vent hole to allow the water or argon to displace the oxygen. If this were argon here, this would be air and oxygen right here. And unlike the water, which is just kind of there, this little area would be swirling and mixing in a little oxygen in with the argon and you wouldn't get a great purge. That's why you need a little vent hole at any high point like this that might trap air. And that allows the argon, which is heavier than air, to fill it up just like water. Then you can get a good purge. Notice I've got these copper third hands on here to transfer a ground, and I've got a vent hole cut in the aluminum tape there at the high point, and that joint can be welded now and purged. Now this is a different joint here, and I've got holes poked in the tape of each one of those nipples because they are now the high point where oxygen could be trapped. With a hole poked in there, it will allow the argon to displace all the air out of there, just like the water demonstration earlier. So when you're purging a part like this, if you've got little protrusions like these nipples, you've got to be mindful when you reposition the part where your high points are, and you've got to always have a vent at the high point. I like to use a little X-slot a lot of times on this because it prevents you from having a weld blow out when you seal everything up, when you make that last weld. Poof, you see it open up just a little bit there? It stays shut while you don't need much of a vent, and then when you close up a weld, it'll open up and kind of save you some heartache sometimes. The reason we're able to offer such a good warranty on it is because I've done so much testing on it. You open the box, you'll see this QR code. The camera on your smartphone will hover over that QR code, highlight this link, you'll click it, and it takes you to a page where you can enter your information and activate your warranty. Another thing is I've made sure this is nestled in high density foam. A problem I've had in the past with different brand flow meters is the packaging. You could pretty much drop this off the rooftop and it'd still be okay. There are so many different brands of TIG welders out there. Some of them use bare hose with clamps and barb fittings. Others use a 5 8 fitting and an inert gas hose. We've got you covered with either option. So whether you want to use a standard inert gas hose with a 5 8 18 fitting, this coupling will get you there. Or if you want to use a bare hose like even automotive vacuum line, you can use the barb fitting. Sometimes I use automotive vacuum line. Other times I use the clear braided hose for a purge line. Let's go over a couple tips for connecting the dual flow meter. So let's hook it up. Comes with two sets of couplings, barbed fittings, and whatnot. You can use pretty much any type of hose. If I want to use just a standard 5 8 18 inert gas fitting, all I need to do is hook this one up. Now for the purge side, you may be using bare hose. This is clear braided hose available at any big box store. This is available at any automotive store. This is just a vacuum line. It's very flexible, fits on a barbed fitting really easily. It's not recommended for titanium, but I've used it on pretty much everything else. You still want to put this on, but you want to put the barbed fitting on there and then screw that in. I'll get that tight. All right, this is, again, this is the vacuum, automotive vacuum line. You can see how easily that fits on there. The drawback of that is if you run over that with your chair, it can pinch it, can pinch it and pop it loose. 
okay? But this stuff is a lot more stiff, a lot less likely to get pinched on, uh, at least pinched to where it doesn't purge anymore. And this, this works pretty good on here too. So you could just slide that on there, put a hose clamp here. Really all it needs is a cheap, you know, spring clamp. But I don't really love these things, but they put they, they work enough to keep this on there. Get a little crank on that thing. I've had some that, that if, you, if you tighten it just a little bit, it actually leaks. When you're ready to turn the cylinder on, you don't want to be sticking your eyeballs right in here like this. It's a lot of pressure here. I would say look away, honestly. Look away, slowly crack the valve. You don't want to shoot all that pressure in that regulator all at once. Slowly crack the valve, then when it registers, you can go as fast as you want. And you want it, you want it open all the way. You want to backseat it. These high pressure argon cylinders have a backseat valve. And if you don't backseat it and you forget to turn it off and you go inside and go to bed, you can leak a little bit around the stem and, and waste all your argon, come back the next day and your tank's almost empty. So you don't want that. I got a little soapy solution in here. You can leak check your fittings pretty easily. See, we don't want that. You go to bed with that doing that, you're gonna wind up with an empty tank, okay? We get a little torque on it. Good to go. If you're done for the day, remember, turn your gas all the way off. And that's it.